What's going on, guys? Zuko back with another War Within video. Hope you're all doing very well. We're going to look at Farseer again. This is just a video about Farseer. We're not comparing to Stormbringer this time. I just want to send you through some footage of some dungeons I'm doing and kind of my experiment that I've been trying with Elemental Blast. And um, this is something that, you know, almost no builds are running this anymore. I mean, we, I don't think we really even were from the beginning of the War Within. I'm just trying it because of the synergy it has with Aftershock and... How potentially strong it is inside of your ascendance cooldown when it gets when your ascendance cooldown gets accelerated because of preeminence and even in during like a bloodlust you guys are going to see in the footage like how many ellie blasts come shooting out of you and it's really fun and interesting and kind of cool in my opinion we're running farseer i'm running the i'm going to call it the long farseer where we don't have a chance of getting any extra ancestors ever but when we're, when we do have our ancestors they last for 10 seconds and they're very, very powerful when they're out. So that's kind of the build that I enjoy doing. So you have a 30-second set cooldown for your ancestors. That's it. You, you get them every 30 seconds. Uh, no cooldown reduction on it at all. We are running Liquid Magma Totem. I'm not, run, I'm not an Echoes fan. I'm never going to run this. Uh, so just the way it is. I know it's powerful in certain circumstances. But um, that's the build. I really do enjoy this playstyle with Farseer. It kind of feels like... Every single pack, you've got a major cooldown that's coming up, and you're never, like, worried about, like, lacking damage. Like, you're just always going to have damage on any particular pack that you're doing because you have a 30-second cooldown spike there. Here's the opening pack of our card. This is a plus 11 we did. Um, this is with Ascendance, so we have a really big pump here. I'm just going to show you highlights of different moments in this dungeon and then a Mist of Tyrannus Scythe as well. So... Again, a little disclaimer, you can see my stats in the bottom left corner down here. My haste is really high right now because I'm inside of my Ascendance window with Bloodlust. But my mastery is quite low. If my mastery was higher, then all my damage would be higher, including my uh, Ancestors. So I have Crit, which is like, because I'm kind of a Resto Shaman for Crit is okay for the Ancestors, but it's not great. Um, it's not the best for sure. Because they're always critting with Lava Burst anyway, so you kind of want mastery. Haste is the most important thing. And as I mentioned a minute ago, Ascendance is very, very good for the Stormbringer Tempest build because Tempest can overload. None of the spells on your ancestors can overload at all. So um, it ends up being not the best thing that you have Ascendance. But if we take Preeminence, we get 20% Haste inside of Ascendance. That's what's good for the ancestors. Having more haste makes the ancestors cast faster, and that is really what we're talking about. That's the bigger that's the bigger deal. Um, so you really just want as much haste as possible. Um, yeah, first boss. This is really cool. I want to show you this. We get a bunch of extra elemental blast procs here. We have ascendance. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm not pumping ascendance yet because I'm building up to my first Ellie blast in the hopes that I'll get a reset on it. Okay. So I'm doing Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. There's a Lava Burst. And then I'm going to go Ascendance right now. I've got my Ellie Blast. Here we go. We're going to go Boom. I'm actually going to pop it, I think, on these ads to blow them up. Okay. And then we'll go Boom right here. There's my Ascendance into a huge Chain Lightning. The ads are going to get deleted right here by us, which is really, really nice. Then we go back to the boss. Now we're throwing Ellie Blast at the boss. Watch how many procs of Elemental Blast I get here. One, two, three. There's another one, one, two, three. That's three in the air. We're going to do one, two, three, four. Oh, that was three again. And then here comes the big one. You ready? We're going to cast it right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> you just see this in real time. It's so cool. Pew, 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 pew. Like, that's crazy. That's actually crazy. That was because we had an Ice Fury proc. And I hadn't launched the Ellie Blast from the Ice Fury proc yet, so it was kind of stored up and ready to go. But those are the kinds of moments you can have with Elemental Blast, which is why I love this spell so much. I just think it's really, really cool. How, first of all, it does a lot of damage. It gives you the stat bonuses, which is really cool. And it just, I don't know, man, it just feels really good uh, to play. I think I also have the talent that buffs it. So we have this talent as well. The stat bonuses granted by Elemental Blast are buffed by 25%. So... That means that you get 7% um, crit or haste and then 14% mastery, which is really good. So, yeah, I kind of just love 
I love the animation of it. I love the buffs that you get. Look at how many you get. Like, you just keep getting more and more over and over again. The damage from it is also good. We're doing good boss damage right now with this build. And again, with the Farseer build, every 30 seconds, you've got this really nice uh, window of damage. And it's coming up right now. We're going to get it again on these ads so I can Primordial Wave, put my Liquid Magma Totem down, and then boom, we can delete these ads once again. It's so good just to have that flexibility of the, the Ancestors popping up every 30 seconds. I think it's it's really solid. Let's go to 940 here on the video. This is another big AoE pack with Ascendant. So there goes my Ascendance right there. Liquid Magma Totem is down. We've got a Stormkeeper ready to go as well. Just big Earthquakes and Chain Lightnings and everything else. And your ancestors are just going to, you know, copy what you're doing. So you don't have to really worry about that. You're not worried about any Tempest procs or anything. You have that sort of consistency, I feel like, with this build. Um, if you run it kind of the way that I'm running it. Now, you can do an RNG build with the ancestors where you are um, having a, pers you know, a chance to pop out a new ancestor at any given moment. I'm going to experiment with that build for sure. But I, I just really like having a guaranteed damage burst window every 30 seconds it just feels better to me um i don't know let's go to the next boss this is really cool we get another um ascendance window with bloodlust so lots of damage coming out here and again our single target damage is pretty good with the ancestors anyway the farseer tree is just better on single target but if you take ellie blast it feels like it's even got another level up and again inside of ascendance with um bloodlust rolling our haste is at 140 percent right now so the, down, the downside of Ellie Blast is that it has a cast time, right? And it costs more Maelstrom, but the cast time is a big one. It, the, the cast time kind of goes away, right? When you've got 140% haste inside of Ascendance with your Primordial Wave Haste and Bloodlust. Like, you just stack all these haste modifiers on top of each other, and you end up doing outrageous amounts of damage. And the Ellie Blast doesn't feel as much of a liability anymore. Because it does feel a little bit like a liability because you have a cast time that you've got to get over. But if you can just stack enough haste, it ends up feeling quite good. And um, and yeah, it ends up doing a crazy amount of damage. So I just wanted to show you that little moment there. There's another big AoE pack coming up. Let's go here. This AoE pack right here. This is massive. I want to talk about double liquid magma totem for a second. If you're not going to run the Echoes build, you need to run double liquid magma totem. Which all I mean by that is make sure you're using totemic projection on cooldown, not projection, sorry, totemic recall on cooldown so you can get your liquid magma totem back so you can cast it again. This is me casting two liquid magma totems here, and the damage from the liquid magma totems is, is good. It's actually very good, even just on its own. I'm not, I don't have ascendance here, I don't even have stormkeeper. Um, I just have double liquid magma totem plus my ancestors, and then I get an ascendance proc here, which is awesome. But the damage from liquid magma totem alone is actually very, very good when you can stack two of them together, and you can do it every couple of minutes with totemic recall. So I would highly encourage you get in the habit of press, pressing totem into a second totem into your ancestors, and then you go right. Um, that that's just really cool. And you can do a lot of damage. I mean, we're doing a lot of damage there, so that's uh, pretty awesome there. Final boss fight, 1850 here. Let's go. Um, this is uh, pretty clear. I'm not, not going to show you the entire thing because I want to show you some footage from Mists of Tyrna Scythe, which is very, very cool. I did another dungeon with this build. But the only downside to... Oh, my God. We got four Ellie Blasts right there. The only downside to Ellie Blast, of course, is on fights like this where the floor is very dangerous. Standing still, pressing Ellie Blast can be a liability. So... I understand some of you guys are like, man, I just love the instant cast of Earthshock. Absolutely, I agree with you. That is a huge upside to Earthshock. And of course, Earthshock with um with deeply rooted, you're probably gonna get more deeply rooted procs from Earthshock versus uh Ellie Blast because you're gonna cast more Earthshocks than you will Ellie Blast because it costs less, right? So there are downsides to Ellie Blast, right? You're probably not proccing deeply rooted as much in single target as you might want to. And then you have to stand still to cast it. I understand that. One thing you can do to utilize it, of course, use Spirit Walker's Grace more often than you're used to using. The second big thing would be is that when you press Ancestral Swiftness, you can press Elemental Blast instantly, right? So it's really cool because when you press Primordial Wave, you get... A, an instant cast lava burst no matter what it used to be you know last patch that you had to go um 
Primordial Wave, Ancestral Swiftness, and then you had to use the Ancestral Swiftness proc on uh, Lava Burst to get the big Lava Burst chain rolling. But now, because you get an instant Lava Burst for free, you get a proc from it, from Primordial Wave. You can go Primordial Wave, Ancestral Swiftness, and then you could use an Ellie Blast if you've got one in the chamber. And then you can also use an instant Lava Burst right after. So you can get two instant spells back to back. That does provide you some flexibility uh, when it comes to this build, and it does really help out a lot. So on fights like this where the ground is constantly covered in crap, okay? So just some advice there, but there are definitely downsides to Ellie Blast versus um, Earth Shock, okay? There's our damage overall. We were just under the Enhancement Shaman. 1.48 mil overall with no uh, Augvoker. There's Earthquake. Our ancestors are our second highest damage. So pretty good. It looks pretty good. Chain Lightning, Lava Burst, Ellie Blast is in there as well. Very, very good there. I'm going to look at the... Uh, we had a 2.5 mil Ellie Blast crit there. Let's look at Mists of Tyrannus Scythe really quickly. Just want to show you a little bit more footage from this. We have a huge opener here. Liquid Magma Totem. I don't think I did, I did not put double liquid magma totem down. That was a big mistake, actually. So I messed it up already. My totemic recalls over here. I should have pressed it and put a second totemic uh, totem down. That's okay. I also forgot to get my alley out right away. I kind of messed up this pull. And then I ended up getting channeled on. I could have done like five to six million damage on this pull. I'm not even kidding. But I ended up getting channeled on, so I get stunned. But I didn't I didn't get my elemental out right away. And I didn't double liquid magma totem. So two mistakes right there that cost me probably a million damage per second. On top of the fact that I got channeled on, and that's just that's always going to lower your damage there. But there you go, decent damage there. And then um, the first boss. I want to go to the first boss here. We'll go to 455. The first boss, of course, we get extra damage once he gets once we kill the tree and she starts channeling on the main boss. We get double damage here. This is really really cool. I don't think I've ever done this much damage on this boss. Um, but we have our everything's ready to go now. We're doing double damage right now. So I'm summoning my Ellie, I think. And then I get Ascendance going. Then we have Stormkeeper. And I'm just trying to get Elemental Blast to do big damage. And we get a couple of enormous Ellie Blasts. That was an 8.7 mil Ellie Blast right there. 8.7. You can see it under there. 8, 7, 7, 5, 2, 30, right? That's one Ellie Blast. And then we get another one here. That's enormous right here. 9 million. <laughs> We get a 9 mil Ellie Blast without an Augvoker. This is a devastation of Ogre, by the way. So 2.5 million damage on this boss fight. Peak. I don't think I've ever had that much before. And um, it's just awesome, dude. Like, that is just so cool. Yeah, I, I just I just love it. I mean, uh, part of it is because I think we had the Affix as well, which I believe gives you crit uh, this week, if I'm not mistaken. So we kind of got lucky there. But it's just really cool to do that much damage. And Ellie Blast... Can really really pump if you wanted to yeah let's go to another big aoe pull that i don't actually get uh cc'd on near the end of the dungeon here this is a big double pull that people always do i have double liquid magma totem on the ground already here comes my primordial wave i send it then i press ascendance boom there we go and then we've got big earthquakes one two three four that's four earthquakes on the ground i'm cap toteming then we do our stormkeeper into our Ice Fury, and then more Earthquakes, more Earthquakes. Frost Shock. Frost Shock in AoE does a lot of damage. Don't discount how good the Frost Shocks are. Once you press Ice Fury, you get those Frost Shock procs. They are very good. 5.7 million. We're uh, pumping here. We're pumping on this AoE pack. So it's good. It's solid. The build is good. I think maybe if you're running a Tempest build, like Storm Keep Stormbringer, and you got multiple Tempest procs, you'd probably do more damage. Probably, but again, I'm just here to show you what Farseer is capable of and how fun it actually is to play because it is so much fun to play. Okay, we'll get to the end here. 2314 is the end of the boss fight, and then oh, yeah, everybody ended up dying at the end. Pretty funny. We'll look at our numbers here. So, in the Mists of Tyrannus side, we did 1.7 million overall without an Augvoker. Once again, the Ancestors did basically the exact same amount of damage 14.4%, and then Ellie Blast did a whole bunch of damage. And then, again, there's that Frost Shock down there. I don't want you to forget about Frost Shock. It is really, really powerful. Don't uh, discount how good the AoE damage from Frost Shock is. So that's it. Those are the numbers. And um, that's how Farseer is looking right now. It's a lot of fun. It's really good. And if you take Elemental Blast, it's actually not that bad at all, in my opinion. So the uptime on your buffs is, is actually pretty good. Um, 
we did a miss there like on the miss basically again 1.7 million overall we're looking at uptime on my elemental blast buffs is almost 50 percent 45 to 49 percent and then if we're looking at an arakara uh no not that one that was uh, that was one where we all kind of died i think this one here this one this one here yeah this one here there are my buffs again 48 47 46 percent and uh there's the damage there so there's a lot of damage it's a lot of fun to play um i gotta say it, it, it's it's a really fun build in my opinion to play i just really enjoy it and again you can get these really juicy ellie blasts ellie blasts don't sleep on this thing it does a lot of damage so thank you so much again for watching let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i'd love to hear from all of you down there thank you so much again i love you i'll see you in the next one